Welcome to another conversation with my go-to experts. The conversations I like to have because at the start of your business journey, on your business journey, it can feel like you are the everything in your business. You are the finance director, you are the marketing manager, you're the CEO, you're putting out the rubbish and you're making the coffee. It can feel overwhelming and at times it can feel really lonely, which is why I bring on my fabulous um, experts to help you and share their golden nuggets. Now, in case we've not met, my name is Lindsay Burden and I'm an intuitive business coach and I work with ambitious women in business, inspiring, motivating and guiding them to create wildly successful businesses and a time-rich lifestyle. And today I'm talking to the fabulous Tim Brock, who works alongside the FSB. Hello, Tim. How are you today? Hi, Lindsay. Very well, thank you. And uh, thank you for, for inviting me on. You're most welcome. And we met um, networking um, and have known each other a little while. And I wanted to bring you on, for, I guess, for several reasons. One, because you can tell us a little bit about the Federation of Small Business, the FSB, but also so we can talk about business generally and and maybe sort of uncover some of the reasons why it can be so challenging. So before we get started, Tim, would you like to tell everyone what the Federation of Small Business is i can and i'll keep it very brief we do a lot <laughs> but we can sum it up quite quickly essentially we're like the union for for small business owners we started 50 it is our 50th year this year actually wow. we are 50 in june i believe um but we started off and we still are a lobbying group so we represent we thought get everyone together we've got a louder voice we've got more evidence so we do that extremely well um, and you'll see us on the news quite a lot and we'll champion any big issues out there. The other bit, when we had a collection of businesses together, we said, what else do all these businesses need? What, what unites them? And what unites them and what we've chosen is really compliance and legal things, the small print, um, the bit no one likes, um, the bit which can be difficult to comprehend. And we thought we can help them do that. And that's what we do. So we give lots of advice uh, free advice and lots of documents and we hold their hand and make it much better value for them especially when they're early because it can be very very expensive uh, easy to avoid but we make it easy and you should be doing it and luckily they are and they're protected and it's a good foundation for your for your business it certainly is and I my business is 10 years young it might be 11 this year I'm not sure but the point I was going to make was at the very beginning of my journey, there's um, an incredible woman here in Salisbury and said, you must join the FSB. And when this incredible woman, woman used to tell you things, you did it. So I have always been a member and I, it's such a fabulous organisation and the benefits are great and well worth your membership fee. But we might talk a bit more about that later. But I've just looked at my notes. You're a farmer's son. I am, yeah, born and bred and, and educated, yes, in, in farming. You might have to ask you some more questions because that is one challenging business to be in, isn't it? It is, and probably one reason why I'm not necessarily in it too much now. Um, <laughs> it is, it's hard, it, yeah, it, it's um, back in the day, yes, when, when people, I suppose, valued where their food came and valued farmers, it was, uh, but really... I, I decided at quite an early age I, I wasn't going to go into it. I dabbled. I, I dipped my feet in it and, and the sort of new technology side and, and I suppose cut my teeth with it, actually, in terms of my career and then skirted around it. But early on, I thought I'm going to work with people who add value to farm products. So I thought I'll deal with a sausage maker and a brewer and the people who are uh, who are adding value to the, to, the, to the pig and to the corn and everything else. So I spent a long time doing that. It sounds like you just picked things, presumably, presuming you are a meat eater. It sounds like you've gone, ah, actually, sausages and beer. That sounds like a great place to be. Well, we did wine and we did uh, all, all sorts. Of, yeah. And actually, we're blessed. I uh, born and blessed in, in, in Hampshire. You know, Hampshire's a, a, a lovely, I mean, I, I'm in Salisbury now, uh, like you, Lindsay. Um, but uh, in Hampshire, yeah, we were blessed with sort of chalk water streams. I should have mentioned trout, shouldn't I? And uh, and, and back in the day when we grew hops as well and all these sort of things, which you just don't see anymore. Yeah. We see trout, but uh, not hops. Yeah, not the hops. Wow. And I had to mention that because I think it is worth mentioning because that's that's the journey that you've been on. And then um, I was reading here as well now. So supporting business owners for over 25 years. So you know, 
You come with credibility, Tim, most definitely. That's kind of you to say so. <laughs> I wouldn't have invited you on, otherwise would I, yeah. right? But yes, I have helped cheese makers and big farmers, and uh, I've, I've helped a lot of people over the years, yeah. Yeah. There's a real theme, isn't there? It's all, it's all food and drink related. I like it, Tim. Now then, I always ask everyone to give me a title um, for our um, conversation. And and you wrote things you wish you'd known when you started in business. And you've got three fabulous points, really, that will cover off, I think, those key benefits or the key things that are often missing for business owners I think and makes the journey more challenging than it needs to be and the first thing we wanted to talk about was discover and I like the way you use that word I was just checking my notes discover support what did you mean by discover support well firstly I think the list sorry was, was based on I speak to lots of people and not just necessarily startup businesses you know you've got businesses been going for years and we all meet them who you know, again, have probably missed some bits which would have made their life easier, still can make their life easier. But discover support. Yes. And it's really, first of all, go in with your eye, your eyes wide open, I've said, you know, because we go in or people go in and go, right, my business, you know, and yeah. and don't look up and don't look around. And there's many reasons why you don't look up and around because you're kind of really stuck in. And we'll, we'll maybe discuss that later. Um but it's always good if I ever have a business owner who approaches me and said, oh, so-and-so said I should speak to you. And you think, ah, they've they've passed the first test. They've they've gone, they probably Googled something or spoken to someone and said, who can help me? Um, and you think, yeah. And and the thing is, there is lots of support out there. Um, whether it's the local authority, it might be the local trade association, the, the chambers. It's just sort of just Google it. Just Google business support in Wiltshire, business business support in Salisbury, business support in the south of England. And what you're basically looking at is is loads of free resources. And that can sometimes be money. Yeah. So councils will just give you a check for money. Um, some of some of those checks might be associated with something which will help you get you might might be a bit more form filling. Um, there's lots of people out there who will talk to you for free, help you for free. I say coaching. I, um, people will help you. I wouldn't put them in the same category as someone who's going to get to know you really well and get right into you and your business. There's a, there's a big difference there. But there are people who can sort of get you on the straight and narrow. Um, we've also got things like free webinars. And I was talking to someone yesterday, you know, I'm going to go on a social media course. You think, well, you know, by the time you've done the course, it's probably moved on, you know, the algorithms. So there's lots of people who do free seminars and have groups and who, who can help you and, and sort of work alongside you. And, and a lot of that's free. It doesn't, bearing in mind as a small startup, there's not a lot of money. No. And I just wonder, there's two things that were coming to mind. <clears throat> and if I say one, I'll probably have forgotten the other one, but hopefully it'll come back to me if I have, if I do. <laughs> do you think that people are scared of asking for help at the beginning of the beginning of their journey? I don't think they're scared. I don't think they've thought about it. It hasn't occurred to them. So they, I don't uh, think, it's not like men asking for directions. No, no, it's not. <laughs> it's, no, they haven't thought because, and again, the elephant in the room, isn't it, is it's a bloody tough. It is. It's tough and there's lots on and you're never, you're going to have to be superhuman to manage it all and you can't manage it all. So you just don't think about it. Yeah, I, I mean, I do think that there are those that don't want to ask for help because they have to see to be seen to have it all together, to know what they're doing. And they couldn't possibly ask for help because that sort of might make others feel that they're not where they need to be. But actually, I will say that asking for help, it's such an incredible thing to do. And it's a sign of strength, not of weakness. And maybe that applies more to those that have been in business longer. But I, the other thing I'm, I was sort of, thinking about while, we, while you were talking is there is so much information out there Tim and it we know how overwhelming I've been in business 10 years and I know how overwhelming it is when I go and look for something and you know I've been around a long time so I can discount things quite quickly but at the beginning of your journey particularly it is information overload out there so how do you know and, and I think that's really where your local chambers you know anything that's run by your local government 
um, offices and the FSB is so important and comes into its own because who do you trust otherwise? And these are trusted places, aren't they? You're quite right. And that sort of leads in, we, we, we'll not go straight into the second point yet, but actually speaking to people, you know, and quite often whilst you're on that journey, you're meeting people and you can ask them, but you still need, and also isn't it it's this badge of honour, you know, I've made mistakes and you think, you, you know, mistakes are good, but some mistakes, if you just ask someone first, you would have saved yourself a lot of time, a lot of money. So they're not all good. Just ask someone. Um, and, and yes, it does need a filter. And again, with FSB, with Chambers or whatever, we are actually there to filter a lot of that information. So we can put it all in one big pot, work out the good bits and tell you what they are, rather than you searching for endless days. Because you say all these organisations and, and local authorities they've got money, you know, they sometimes have money to give out. They've got to give it out. They're not, you know, they want to give it out. Yeah. <laughs> they can't give it back normally. Yeah. <clears throat> that word support, I mean, you and I are advocates of networking. We are avid networkers. We met networking. And for me, that is also where you can find that support and that community that makes your journey easier and when you're feeling that overwhelm about where do I go who do I speak to that's where you can go as well to get those recommendations and referrals so yeah I'm all up for networking as well there's and that goes in I say it's the second point but it should ideally be the first point but the idea is whilst you're looking for support going on some of these journeys for webinars events free networking that's where you tend to meet people on the same journey and it's those and it's a good way of meeting people rather than putting a post on LinkedIn saying, help, can anyone, you know, is anyone out there? Uh, if you're meeting people in the same, in the sort of, that's a good start because you know they're kind of like-minded. Um, and I put, you know, it's about learning together. It, 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 it's about accountability, often collaboration. Yeah. And the best thing is actually you can cry together and laugh together. But that is the most important thing, especially most people are kind of on their own when they start out. Yeah. You need, you need company. Um and you wrote that so beautifully. So point two, find people in the same and bigger boats. So you've really covered off there that the same boat or the same size of boat. But there is something, isn't there, about hanging out with people in the boat that you're aspiring to, if we're going to continue with the boat thing. Because otherwise you can, there is potential of holding yourself stuck. So when you're surrounding yourself with these incredible people, it's those that are on the journey, but it's also those that have been on the journey, isn't it? That you can um, hang out with, as the phrase goes. Yeah, quite right. And if you, and that sometimes boils down to the right networking group, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Where you've got, and it's people, and we'll probably maybe discuss about givers and, and takers later on, but you're looking for the givers, yeah. um, the people who've been in your boat, but actually the people, then we did mention collaboration, didn't we? Because sometimes, you know, they might just be looking for a bit of support. They might not be able to cope with all their work. They might not. So not only is it learning, but who knows, they they could give you that valuable leg up you need. Yeah. Um, and no doubt, and, they, and if they've got any sense, they'd be looking at what you're doing as well, even as a startup and your methods, and they'll be learning from you and learning together. And I think those incredible people that want to support and help you and that are open to learning from you, they are the people you will find in really incredible networks. And, I, and we should probably just mention only network because, you know, we are both in there. And that is a really, you know, the only network is a fabulous example of where you will find, you know, a breadth of knowledge and expertise and because of the way it's been established, um, and I have interviewed um, Kelly before, um, the way it's been established, it is a supportive community. So it really is about finding that community, isn't it, that want to support you. And I love that idea that we can learn from those at the beginning of their, you know, those at the beginning of their journeys as well. It really is a two way street, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, it is. And also actually just this realisation, because a lot of people might write, you know, if you're, you're doing a, you've started a website business, you might run away from any sort of networking other people who do websites, you know, and, um, and I've probably been guilty of that in the past, but actually they're the ones who are going to probably give you the most help. And I'll give you one example, if I can. It's another group. It's a network of HR consultants. Yeah. And all they, they, they are HR consultants and they're in a big group and you think, wow, but their help and their support is fantastic 
all the guys and, and they sort of do programs together so the guys in the middle are cheering down the guys at the bottom guys at the top are cheering everyone and it's just this collaboration and it's just amazing much like only but uh, if you you need to find it and when you found it well make sure you find it <laughs> yes we might have to put a link to the only network um and i think there is also something around um having those fabulous collect connections and being secure in a place where you can show up in a room where you are not the only one and you mentioned that there or alluded to some people may have concerns around going to a networking group where there is more than one web designer you know and let's face it you can network and you can find hundreds of coaches there because we love networking as business coaches but I love meeting other business coaches I love other business coaches you know I want those people in my network because we're not always going to be a perfect match we're not always going to have capacity and there is something really special about saying you know I, I'm not the right person or I haven't got space. But you need to talk to and that in itself. So I would if we could get another message out, which probably we hadn't thought about it's Don't be scared of being in a room where you're not the only one. And in fact, I would say, you know, it's really valuable. And it goes back to that collaborative working because like you've already alluded to, if they've got more work, they may want to offload it. Yeah. So it can yeah. work all ways. And I really like those two points. <clears throat> excuse me so the first point was discover support and find people in the same and bigger boats and they are absolutely linked and I think we sort of focused on the first part it's about those more I was going to say professional bodies but the organizations that's the word I'm looking for <clears throat> organizations that can help you um and then the second part feels more like it's finding your people you know we talk about finding your tribe don't you and your community so they they are would you agree they're slightly different finding the support and finding your people slightly different they are different and, and i think we said before but in the process of finding support you'll find it's a good way of finding those people yeah um, i really like that i want us to move to part three because i think that's where we're going already and the point you wanted to get across was try not to cut corners and then you had in brackets firm foundations and I mean, it's such an important message isn't it about foundation building but you use the term cut corners cut corners um again we're going talking about new business but this applies equally again it, it, yeah. to, to probably existing businesses certainly if we equate it to new businesses time is short money is short understanding is short we've already touched on the point that even a superhuman is not going to have everything in their head whilst trying to get some money in yeah. <laughs> because they've just started a business or yeah. everyone needs money in don't they yeah um which means invariably uh, corners are cut and uh i mentioned that because whilst with my fsb hat on we help people uh avoiding cut corners we also equally help people who have cut corners and come unstuck and you sort of think, well, let's help, let's maybe not get you in that position in the first place. But if again, if they don't know where to look for support, it's easy to be in that position. Yeah. Because if you've started off and you think, okay, I'm going to go and see a high street solicitor, I want all my T's and C's, I want all my uh, policies, I want all this all done up, you know, you're going to need a few thousand pounds burning a hole in your pocket, which, quite frankly, when you're thinking about money, you're going, I need to sell things and I need to market. I need to market, I need to sell. Yeah. I don't need to get a bit of small print, which quite frankly, no one's going to mind when I sell something to them, you know. And it won't make a difference until someone doesn't pay you, for example. Yeah. Or uh, And that's when it comes unstuck. It's like um, insurance. You yeah. don't know how good your insurance is until you have to make a claim, I always think. Exactly. And and the other, I got a few other gems, wasn't it? It's like, oh, I've never needed it before. You know, yeah. it's never happened. And, and almost now, I, I don't know if I... You must think, oh, I've just jinxed it, you know. Like it's and it, I could probably count on a few fingers on hands yeah. because it's never happened. We've never thought of that. Never happened. You think, well, it will now because yeah, you just now we put it, it out there. Yeah, and the other great one is it's my best friend. You know, we've started a business. You know, what could possibly go wrong? Mm -hmm. Um, but it could be starting a business with your wife, with your father, with your brother. Mm -hmm. Don't assume no. things will go right and even if you get on and something dreadful ha happen, you know you need 
you need to know what's going to happen if someone for whatever reason isn't there because invariably without preparation that's the end of the business yeah you know and i think that foundational piece that you're talking about is the sort of the legality is if you like it is setting Some, up not all business. a lot of it's legality but you, you mentioned insurance um i'm also talking about bookkeeping for example getting your figures customer relationship management having all your customers on some sort of system yeah. as you get going rather than trying to put 200 people with 500 conversations on facebook linkedin and whatsapp on one sort of system which you can efficiently manage whilst you're trying to do other things um which is why you should start off as you mean to go on in that respect and i think that well i was going to sort of because I, I I really, you know, I'm with you, get your foundations right. And I think there's some other pieces around foundational building. And I talk a lot to my clients and this maybe applies to those who have been in business a few years, but always keep the end in mind. Because if you don't, what we have a tendency to do, and I think this does lend itself to that cut corners, is we find the $37 solution on Facebook, other platforms are available. Or someone goes, oh, you just need to do this and it's only 50 quid from that bloke down the road or $50 yen, wherever you are in the world. And you go, okay, you do that. And potentially what you do is you create problems for the future because you're not working from the future. So I think foundationally, there's this sort of the the T's and C's, the the operational, the, the legality side. There is also that pathway that you take when you're growing your business and making sure that you're not taking shortcuts that will create problems for you in the future and quite often they are financial problems because what you've invested in now won't help you later on but there's that piece and I think I wanted to come back actually because we've talked about or you use the word you know, messaging branding I think you, know, you certainly mentioned the word branding and I would say to any business owner if you're at the beginning of your journey don't get too bogged down in some of these other pieces yes you need to know who your audience is what you're going to sell how you're going to do it I think also we can drop down into this place though. I can't start just yet because I haven't got X, Y, and Z. You know, I haven't got a Facebook page and I'm not, I haven't got enough followers on LinkedIn. And we allow all of that to prevent us from starting the journey. And I think it's only when you start the journey and get on your path and follow, you know, follow your path that you, you learn along the way what you need, what's important. You do, and there's so many, and again, it's another topic for another day, but there are mixed messages out there. But I always use the example, you know, the number of people I've spoken to on the start of their journey when they said, I'm going to do a service and I'm going to tackle, uh, and it's going to be for beauticians and hairdressers. That's who I'm going to target. And then you'll you'll catch up in six or seven months time. And they go, yeah, business is going brilliantly. I'm working with butchers and fishmongers, you know. And you go, what happened there, you know? And same same product, same service, but they just completely different, not through choice, through fate. Yeah, but if you don't start, you'll never know that. If you don't exactly. start, you can't yeah. take this wonderful yeah. journey. That's and quite right. And also, don't, and, uh, like, so you did, didn't it? It's like, don't, uh, you know, they talk about branding and, and where, you know, you've, you've, actually, you've got to start, haven't you, before, but you then can sort of then think, okay, well, this is kind of where, still keeping to my plan, uh, Lindsay's plan, um, but don't put it all on the line just as you start. Hold back a bit and just see where see where fate takes you. And I think that whole you know branding, messaging, and marketing. I mean, that is definitely a topic on its own. But if I look back at my ten years, I've rebranded three times because we naturally evolve. But you can't naturally evolve if you don't start. You can't naturally evolve if you don't take the first step. And that feels really important to me that I, I don't want particularly those at the beginning of their journey to get hung up on getting things wrong or you know as long as you learn from everything you'll just keep moving forward and you will naturally evolve as will your business and that's okay and isn't that part of the journey anyway hmm. do you have a view though on because I speak to some people who it's a side hustle so they've been they've been thinking about it they've been developing it alongside a job I kind of favour that sort of model. There's some people, a lot of people, entrance into self-employment is a nice redundancy check, isn't it? So that buys a bit of time to think about it. And very rarely you'll meet someone saying, I'm starting next week and I've got to pay the mortgage in four weeks' time, uh, which I don't like those ones. <laughs> no, that's quite scary, isn't it? 
Um, I I believe there are lots of different ways, and I think we all get into business in a different way. I was that I was made redundant, and actually this was my chance to make it work. Yeah. Um, and had that period of like I need to make it work. Um, and, and was very fortunate that I fell into that. But what was quite interesting is I was still working when I started my business. So I was working three days a week and then working basically every other hour on my business. Um, and I bumped into somebody on the streets of Salisbury who said to me, the best thing you can do is give up your job. If you want your business to grow, you need to give up your job. And I was like, I am trying. Apparently there's a process to redundancy and it seems to be taking a long time. That was my particular um, experience. And when we talk about side hustles, so I, I think there are lots of ways of people going about starting a business. And it might be something that they do alongside of their job for a period of time to create some momentum. Hmm. Um, there, like you say, it's the you know, I've been made redundant. This is my chance. Let's go. There are lots of different examples that we could give. What I will say about that word side hustle, and I was talking to my um, podcast husband, as I like to call him the other day, and we mentioned it on an episode. You know, a side hustle, if you want just a nice little bit of extra income alongside of your job. And if that just eases the pressure and you're having some fun with it and you just want to see where it goes, do it. Um, but quite often there is nothing easy about a side hustle and it takes commitment. So it, it depends on what you want to achieve and how you want to achieve it. But if you want a nice little side hustle that's just earning you some extra pennies, there's some fabulous opportunities. There are some great ways of doing that. But I would say, be really clear about what's important to you hmm. and what you want. Because starting a business is not for the faint hearted. Um, I don't know if you agree, but um, I and I'm all up for making the lives of my clients as easy as possible but they quite often land at my door when they've done the hard work, they've done the first couple of years, when they are worrying about paying the bills. It's not It's not a quick solution and it's a quick win. You know, it's like you've always been in... reading my notes, Lindsay. Was I? Looking <laughs> over the edge at my note. I said, <laughs> it's, tough. it's tough out there. I've got a, a, a title here. It's tough. Yeah, yeah and I think the, the problem is, and... Um, I, I again um my podcast husband and I he does have a name his name's Paul Paul and I have discussed this before on the podcast um there is no such thing as an overnight success yeah. go google apple coca-cola other brands are available they did not happen overnight and if you're not careful and this is why you need the right support the right people around you you will see this utopia where somebody did I always say they followed these 10 steps and they became a millionaire by last Tuesday. You know, it's that kind of information that we'll start looking. And the algorithms know once you start looking, they'll just keep feeding it to you. Yeah. So it does take time to grow a business. It takes time. And actually, that's OK. And it's part of the journey. Yeah, and we've just really talked about how you can make that journey a bit, uh, a, bit a lot easier and a lot more comfortable. Yes. Yeah, and I think that's really important that. So, because I think you and I could talk forever and there's, and already I'm going, oh, and Tim and I could talk about that. And oh, we could talk about that. So, um, and I try and keep these um, interviews succinct. So I just want to go back. There were three things. Discover support. And that feels like it's the, the professional support. It's the organisational support that you can tap into, the Federation of Small Business being one of those. And then it's finding your people. And for us, that's absolutely networking. And we're shameless about saying it. And I will say it again. I think go find networking groups. Go out there. Test them out. A good networking group will want you to test it out. So go do that. And I will put a link to only because it's a shameless link. And I've interviewed Kelly. So I've got no problem with doing that. And then try not to cut corners, which was more about getting your foundations right from the beginning. So it is an easier journey. But then as you grow and develop, keeping in mind the future so your business foundations are working 
towards that. They're being built to support they are. the future. And, say, and there are ways of doing that which don't involve yeah. spending thousands and thousands of thousands of pounds, which, quite frankly, a lot of people won't have at that stage of their business. So there are, all, there are solutions, yeah. And I think it's worth that that is worth mentioning, actually, Tim. And I've done lots of um, training in the past where, you know, I'm a massive advocate for coaching. I had a coach right from the very beginning and I've worked with a number of coaches. Um, so I'm a huge advocate for coach coaching and I am a coach. So I would be, some might say. But what I will say is it's not just about investing. I think there is a, a place for investing. But at the beginning of your journey, there is so much free support out there. Go find it. Don't think you have to take this journey alone. I think that's what I would say. And thinking about not taking this journey alone, if somebody wanted to find out more about the Federation of Small Business, Tim, how do they go about doing that? Well, they can just drop me a line, an email. Um, I, I don't you hope to book I will make email. sure that's all below the video as the kids will. And LinkedIn, of course, is a good one. Um, and hopefully we can make and most of those things joined up. You know, I can help with quite a bit of that, finding the people, finding the support, finding the um, foundations. Um, and I will say that about you, Tim. You're absolutely brilliant at helping people join the dots up. So you know, with your federation of small business hat aside, and, and maybe it's because of that, but you're really good at being able to go, okay, here, here, and here, and helping people to go on that journey and start that journey. So if there is anyone watching in the UK, obviously, <laughs> um, and you want, you know, just to ask Tim a question or need a little bit of help and support and don't even know where to start, please do get in touch with Tim and I will make sure all those contact details are below. Um, this video so you can find that really easily. Um, I just wanted to go back to my notes because I often, uh, well, I ask an extra question on my form when that everyone completes before I book a call. So we're all on the same page, not to vet anyone. Um, and I ask, if you started your business again, what one thing would you do differently? Now, sometimes I go back to this and sometimes I don't. Today, I want to go back to it. You wrote set boundaries. Tell us more, Tim because I think it's an important message. Setting boundaries, yeah. And it's like, I'm learning this now, more and more. Um, and I'll tell you why. Um, we, we've talked about givers, you know, um, or giving is good, and then there's a certain frame, but I think if we say givers can can gain, or givers, yes, yes. givers, yeah, givers do gain, because I think it's someone else's trademark, isn't it, givers gain? Um, but givers do gain. So if you give, it, it generally comes back, but, but never lose sight of the fact that some people will just take and it will keep on taking <laughs> and we will come across those people um, and they do they do take our time. They take our time. They take our energy and they ultimately take our profit, you know, when all we want to do is just help people. Um, and it, it, someone flagged it up. It was Amer one of the American members of Only. Um, we got some American research about someone that was one of the universities did a study. Um, and it's OK. So there's really nice people in business and there's really hard people in business. You know, who who runs the best business? You know, if you put it, you know, who makes the most profit, the hard ones or the nice ones? And they produce for scale. And right at the top, you had the nice ones. Yeah, OK, so that which is nice. It restores faith, doesn't it? If you want to give. But at the bottom, there was also nice ones. And in the middle were the bad ones. And they said, well, what the ones at the bottom? Because they're nice. They're at the bottom because they're very nice. But they didn't set boundaries. <laughs> they were too nice. <laughs> yeah. So learning to say no, no to clients that you're not aligned with, work that you're not aligned with, um, and letting clients go when you know that they are taking more than you are able to give. Or Which is easier when you get more down the journey, isn't it? Difficult in the early I mean, days. I would absolutely agree with that. And... You you just mentioned, you know, I'm only now really getting my head around boundaries. I would say I've been in business 10 years and I think um, I, I set really great boundaries and then forget all about them. And then I go, oh, my boundaries are out of whack. I'll set some more and off we go. And like you, I think over in, only in the last couple of years have I got boundaries that feel really great while still enabling to be someone who gives when I can. Tim, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's been brilliant. Thank you.